There is a spider mite. Gosh dang it. Am I gonna have to take you in for a treatment? Okay, so somebody's ready for a repot, but I'm gonna go give it a treatment of Captain Jack's dead bug brew before I get started here. And I do that in my bathtub. So I'm gonna take this to my shower, put it in there, spray it all down, and then I'll be right back. Okay, just completely drench the plant in Captain Jack's dead bug brew. And that's normally what I use on this plant. It works really well for spider mites. Um, you have you have to be consistent with it though. If you get spider mites on a plant, you've got to use that stuff like every few days to really knock them out and knock them back. So as far as the spider mites goes, there's definitely some species of plants that are more prone to spider mites than others, but particularly the ones that like to be more moist. If they don't get that moisture they need, they get stressed out and the spider mites just like descend on the poor little things. So this is one of those plants and I don't know if I mentioned yet, but this is Philodendron palmanii, which has gotten some beautiful leaves. Um, the first few leaves, when it first came in from import, I originally imported this from Equigenera, but when I first got it, it got a really bad case of spider mites. And so the leaves were just like not happy about that situation. So there was a lot of damage done, but the newer leaves that have been coming in lately, those have recovered. So the plant will recover, even if it gets beat down by spider mites, it can come back and can start looking beautiful again. Now, this thing is also stressed out because it's not even like in the pot hardly anymore. So, so you can see it is, it's leaving the pot. It does not care that the pot is behind it a half mile. It's like going forward, looking for more soil. I've got these self-watering pots that I got from Amazon and they were pretty much the longest pots that I could find, um, at least for a reasonable price. So I got them in a set of two. I will link the seller below um, or I'll link the exact product that I got below. Uh, the crawling philodendrons, they're pretty wild. They're, they're definitely, you know, they always are described to have a scrambling growth pattern. Yes, scrambling is the, is the right way. They're definitely um, not so organized in their growth. It's, uh, I'm grateful it's growing straight though, so at least I can get this one into the pot, but wait until you see some of my other crawlers. They're, they're out of control. So um, by the time I pot this in here, it's gonna put out like two leaves and already be ready to get out of this pot, but we're gonna try it anyway. All right, there we go. All right, we gotta change out the old soil. We gotta, we gotta let people off the elevator before we get on, right? So let's, let's get the old soil out of the pot. So I just used my knife to uh, slide down the edge of the pot. So one of my favorite parts of doing a repot is to actually see my old soil recipes and see how they aged over time, you know? Because if they compacted or something, I, I need to know that. Or if the roots are like not so hardy in there, or maybe they are, maybe they did really good. It's just interesting interesting to see like the root growth tells you everything you need to know about the soil it was grown in, right? All right, I'm just trying to work that root ball free, gently slipping the knife right along that edge of the pot and just kind of giving it a little lift as I move around. Sometimes it helps to kind of push through the drainage hole, just kind of release the bottom of it. All right, so let's see what the roots are doing in here. It is lightly damp, but wow, it's amazing how much that was drying out. No wonder it was a little bit stressed because these plants like a little bit more moisture. So in my old aeroid recipes, it looks like I was using a lot more soil and less chunk. So, I mean, nowadays I use a lot more chunk. So it's just interesting to see how our, our potting soil ages over time, you know? But I was really glad to see that it was not compacted at all. Also, what's interesting is when you shake most of the potting soil free, you're able to see what the roots were actually growing on and what they wanted to hold on to. And it's the cocoa chips, which is, it's really fun to see that. They do the same thing with bark too, but they love the chunk. So the new mix I'm gonna be putting it in is more chunky, it has more cocoa chips. So there's no soil in here. So I've been experimenting with soilless mixes. So I started using way more cocoa husk chips and fiber, more pumice, the coarse pumice. There's also cocoa peat in here to hold on to moisture. So that's kind of like replacing the potting mix or potting soil mix. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? Oh, worm castings. Yeah, I always use worm castings, like at least 10% worm castings, 10% horticultural charcoal. Oh, actually, you know what? When I pot this up, I forgot, I don't want to pot it up while the outer pot is, um, is under there because it gets all dirty. So actually, I already got it. 
kind of dirty somehow. Um, all right, so I'll just set that down here. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys the parts. So when you get this pot, how to set it up for self-watering. So here's what this self-watering pot comes with. So you have the tube and it has some openings on the very bottom here on that little black cap. And then the float has like the little orange straw and the little floaty part that just drops down inside the tube. When I'm attaching it to the pot, I will actually hold onto that straw just so there's a little more of it poking out. And then this is the pot and it has a hole up here. So I just take that straw that I'm holding there, the float straw and just feed that through the hole and take the tube and just friction fit that in there. And then the cap tells you what level your water is and it has minimum and maximum. So I just slip that on and that also friction fits inside there. So this pot has vents around the side and the bottom and it also has feet and then three spots where it soaks up the water. So it has those vented spots that kind of protrude downwards. So that's how it actually soaks up the water. Now these self-watering pots, I do have one plant in there, a crawling philodendron already. And so I've been able to already kind of test it out and see how much water they actually soak up because different self-watering pots like take up more water than others, right? These, I will tell you, they, they do soak up a lot of water. So make sure that if you're using one, that you put a plant in there that really enjoys water and also adjust your potting soil to kind of fit that. So that's why my potting soil is extra fibrous, extra light and chunky, very, very airy. So I did not want it to be soaking up too much water where it would cause root rot or something. I don't know how long this plant is going to be able to stay in this pot, but as I'm putting it in here, it already looks like it's going to be filling up the entire pot because it's already grown so long out of its old pot. I'm, I'm gonna have to repot this again in the spring. I can feel it already. I'm trying to get some soil kind of fluffed back into those roots since we kind of shook out the old soil. It's probably gonna stress out a little bit. At, oh, <laughs> it's probably gonna stress out a little bit at first because I shook out its old soil. This thing just really had to get repotted. Normally, I don't really love to repot during fall if I don't have to, but sometimes you just have to. So if there's one thing I've noticed about these crawling philodendrons is that they really enjoy their moisture. They do not like to be dry for very long because they will start getting stressed out and well, then they get spider mites and then they really are pissed off about the whole situation. Oh, I should mention about these crawling philodendrons is that you pot them with the stolen on the surface of the soil and only the roots or the bottom part of the stolen go underneath the soil. Okay, there it is. Hopefully you guys are able to see the stolen on top of the soil. And I don't know if you can see, but it's already like two inches away from the edge of the pot. I potted it as close as possible to this side but uh, it's gonna be outgrowing that pretty fast. I'm just hoping that this pot can buy me some time until spring when I'll probably have to repot this again. Yeah, these things, they're, they're not even interested in what was behind them. They're only looking <laughs> forward to where they're going, which is out of the pot. All right, I'll take this to the kitchen. I'll show you guys how I start with watering this in for the very first time and uh, getting the reservoir set up and then I will put it in the plant room. So, all right, off to the kitchen we go. So I'm gonna use a couple drops of Super Thrive. So I just take a little eyedropper get in there and add like three drops to my watering can I just have a little small watering can so that's pretty much all I use for the very first watering just until the plant gets time to kind of get more comfortable in the pot kind of get settled in there and so then like in you know two or three weeks then I will give it its first dose of fertilizer and then I'm just using filtered water from my Brita and I just water that in for the very first time since that soil that I potted into was completely dry Actually, I'm going to add a small scoop of systemic granules also because I am putting this into a self-watering pot. Fungus gnats love self-watering pots and uh, I don't love fungus gnats. So I'm going to use this. This normally does pretty well to keep fungus gnats at bay or really knock them out if you get a bad infestation. Normally I would add that before watering, but now I got to water again because I forgot to add those first. Okay, now I'm just going to water those systemic granules in. And then that pot slides into the outer pot, which will be the reservoir. And then for the water that's gonna go in the reservoir, I'm using spring water, and this is where you add the water here. So I'm just gonna be watching this for when it starts to fill up. Sometimes I'll add the water first to the reservoir and then slide the pot in, because sometimes this won't activate right away, but let's see if it does. Okay, I do see it. It is starting to move. Okay, so there we go. 
If you find that your, your measuring stick isn't working, just kind of fiddle around with that insert pot. Sometimes they'll lift it up and kind of drop it back down and then it'll react and it'll start taking the read of how much water you have in there. So you see down here is minimum and up at the top is max. And so the little float push it up to the top. So we're full on the water and that's all you have to do. Very easy to set up, very easy to work. And the other plant that I have in here is a philodendron luxuriens and it's doing really well. It really likes it a lot. So, so far I know that these pots work well. So you just wanna make sure that you have the right type of soil in there for the right plant uh, because these pots do hold on to a lot of water or I mean they wick up a lot of water. Okay, now I'm gonna take this to the plant room and see if it still fits into its original space or if I need to move it somewhere else. So today is repot crawling philodendron day. I've got more philodendron that are trying to crawl out of their pot. This one has just started to crawl out of its pot here. So I'm gonna be repotting this one also. Uh, I figured I would just let the camera roll with you guys since I'm doing this stuff anyways and just hang out with you. So this, um, this Gloriosum I imported from Indonesia uh, this summer, I think it was, or was it in the springtime? Yeah, anyway, it was, I've, I've had it at least six months now, and this is the latest leaf it's put out. I have two Gloriosums. They both look totally different from each other, and I love them both equally. So we're gonna get repotting this baby. It's just now starting to climb out of the pot, but one thing I've noticed about the different growth patterns of the different crawling philodendrons is the Gloriosum is more organized. It grows more straight with shorter inner nodes, um, you know, shorter spaces between the nodes, and it's just overall a a really lovely beautiful plant to grow it doesn't um, it doesn't get quite so wild and crazy and scrambling like some of the other crawlers do I've been trying to repot this for like a couple of months now and every time I was gonna repot it it was already working on a new caterpillar and so I just kept waiting but I was just like you know what you're just gonna have to just take a break for a minute because I gotta get you into a new pot we've got to get this done otherwise I don't want it to like start hanging over the edge Oh man, the soil feels so dry. I've been watering it too, a lot, and it's just like drying out like crazy. All right, I think we got it. Oh, wow, nice, okay. I'm glad to see this is also pretty light and fluffy. It's not uh, compacted at all, so that's good. It also has a lot of pumice. I used a lot of pumice in this mix. I'm actually just gonna loosen up some of that soil because that's it's gonna be too deep in the pot that I'm using, so I'm gonna have to kind of take out some of that soil. Let's see, should I just like lay those? I guess I'll just like kind of spread those out in the pot there. Yeah, if these pots were just a little deeper, like an inch all the way around would make a huge difference actually. So I have the root ball up against this side as far as I can go. Um, so that way it'll have as much room as possible to grow to the other side. I also had to lay some of those roots. I kind of had to spread them down over this way too, um, just because that root ball was so, it had so much depth to it. And this pot does not have that same amount of depth. So I kind of had to um, spread that out a little. So I did use some potting soil in its old mix, but now in place of that potting soil, it's gonna have cocoa peat. Just about done. I love these Gloriosums. So, oh, you know what, I'm gonna take off some of these old sheaths here. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of peel those back. These crawling philodendrons, they appreciate a little bit less light. So something a little more gentle. So I kind of go for like a medium light situation with these. So I'll have to get them into a new situation, like a new setup in the plant room. And then after I figure out that, I will show you guys how I have them set up. Um, but I'm gonna finish all the repotting first and then we'll do that afterwards. So let me take this to the sink and get that reservoir set up. Oh, and this damage right here, that's from underwatering. I was, uh, I don't know, not paying attention to how much water this plant needed, I guess. But yeah, it got some, it actually did that multiple times. It did it on this leaf back here too. It, it does not appreciate being underwatered. And if you're battling fungus gnats, one thing you can do with your self-watering pots also is to add your systemic or your, your pest control to your water reservoir. So if you're using like mosquito bits, you can sprinkle some of those in here and just let that soak in the water. 
Um, so that is, that's another product that is really popular with fighting fungus gnats. I tried those before, but I did it wrong. I tried to just, let's see, I think I just tried to work it into the top of the soil and it just didn't do enough to stop the fungus gnats. I had a really bad infestation like a couple years ago with my plants and fungus gnats, but I've heard a better option is to let the mosquito bits soak in water first and then you water with that. So I think that it would work the same if you were just going to add some mosquito bits, you know, a few sprinkles into your self-watering pots if you are having any fungus gnat issues. Um, so I'm going to use my system granules in here. So even though I added some to the soil too, I want it in the standing water also. So I'm just using a tiny bit, like maybe half a teaspoon in here. So just a little sprinkle is all it takes. It doesn't take much of this stuff. Okay, now I'll just take that and slide that in the pot. And then I'll add some spring water. See that? That's also underwatering there. Dehydration. So I'm just filling it up until it reads max. So basically about an inch of water is in there. All right, off to the plant room it goes. Okay, this plant is another Gloriosum. It looks much different than my other one. Uh, this one, I don't know actually where it came from. You know what, I'm gonna actually message the seller and ask if they know because uh, it's definitely much different than my Indonesian one. So it does have a beautiful pink caterpillar here and I, I need to get it out of the pot before, I mean, it's already like hitting the edge of the pot and it's still in its original soil mix that it came in from Etsy. So ooh, there is a long white root at the bottom. So I had my other Gloriosum first and I ordered this on Etsy just because I, I saw how beautiful it was. It was like a darker version and it had brighter white veins. And so I wanted to, you know, have a couple of different Gloriosums just to kind of compare them and watch the different varieties grow. I'm really glad I got this one because uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love those dark green leaves. Oh, they're so velvety too with those beautiful white veins. All right, I'll just get the rest of this filled in. There's certain plants that I just enjoy so much. I don't mind having multiples of, especially a Gloriosum because they're, they're so different. They're so variable. And I, I love the idea of having both of them Then I can watch them both grow up and see how they compare as they age. Now I just gotta find the right place for each of these plants. Maybe I can have them lined up on a table so they can all get similar lighting. I definitely wanna make sure that they're getting medium light and not too bright of light. Now I just gotta find a place for this sweet little Gloriosum in the plant room. I had to take a break there and go get some water and it's getting really warm in here this afternoon. So I'm sorry, I had to take off my fleece and long sleeve shirt cause it's 83 degrees out and it's November 19th as I'm filming this right now. So we're just having a, a warm fall. I have my, uh, what is this? Mame, mame, philodendron mame here. It is climbing out of the pot. So I originally imported this from Equigenera and basically uh, it is very spider mite prone. So as we talked about before with the crawling philodendrons, they like moisture. They don't really enjoy drying out. And when they do dry out, they get super stressed. And then the spider mites descend and attack the poor thing. So it does have some spider mite damage on some of these older leaves here. But I, I did try to air layer. And so it does have roots in there. And what I'm gonna do, I think before we pot this up is I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut it off of the, the main stolen. So first things first, I have to make sure that my nippers are sterilized or at least disinfected here with a flame. And the mame kind of has thinner leaves. And so I noticed it's more sensitive to going dry. So it really does not like to go dry. It really wants to keep moisture in the pot all the time. It doesn't want to be like, no plant wants to be in a soppy, soggy soil, right? But it definitely likes to have moisture at all times. One more thing I'll mention about this plant is if you have a crawler and it's in one position, try to leave it in that position. Like if it seems to be happy and growing well, just leave it alone. Don't turn the pot or anything because I'll tell you, this was actually on my desk, my work desk in the plant room. Basically it was traveling in a straight line and then I pushed it about one foot over on my desk just, just to scoot it out of the way. It ended up being a little bit closer to my window 
it did not appreciate that little bit brighter light and it basically turned away from the window and started heading the other direction and by the time i noticed that it was already too late and it basically just made like a right <laughs> right hand turn like a 90 degree angle get trying to get away from the window uh, so these they do like medium light they do not like a real bright indirect light here's what i'm going to be cutting here so right here this is where the new plant is i'm just going to try to scoot out uh, those roots out of the way there and just make my cut here all right can you guys see that cut in there so i'm just going to let this sit out and dry for maybe an hour and i'm going to leave all of its roots still wrapped up so all those air layered roots so it's got all these lovely pink roots and so i'll just leave all those wrapped up so they have access to moisture but that end is exposed to the air and that will dry out and then this part that's left over this is from the original mother plant i don't know if there's anything still left here to grow or if all the nodes have already been spent because like i said i have propagated this already before but i'm just going to leave it alone and keep taking care of it and just see if anything else like pops out of there so there's where the original stem was just going straight and then right about there is where I pushed it about a foot closer on my desk towards the window. And it was like, nope, I'm going the opposite way. And it turned right away from that window. So now I've got like this, I don't know, this right angle here that I'm gonna be working with trying to get it into the pot. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave this sitting on my desk so that cut in can be exposed to the air and dry. I will see you guys in a little bit. All right guys, so I just checked the mommy and I was looking at the tip. It looks like it's drying out nicely. I'm gonna give it a little more time though. So I'm gonna just set this down here and work on the pasta zanum here. So here, here it is. It is a lovely plant. It just has the three leaves, but it's putting out another one right now. Well, it's got the caterpill in here. Actually, if I peel some of this away, you can see it a little bit better. This is quite a juicy plant too, so it's always got its extra floral nectaries going and it's um, quite a chunky, uh, very hearty stolen on it. It's putting out roots all the way around and also it has a caterpillar up here. Oh, I got this plant also from Equigenera. I know this plant has been drying out really quickly too, so I'm curious what the roots are going to be like on this one. I'll try to give it a push through the drainage hole. There we go. Oh! Okay, uh, that thing is super root bound. That is a very solid root mass there. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, let's see the type of soil I used in this one. Okay, yeah, lots of cocoa chips and the pumice. Lots of big healthy roots around the top here too. Okay, I only wanna loosen up that root ball enough just to where it's gonna be able to settle into that new pot and be a little bit more shallow and not quite so deep. All right, let's see if we can get those roots to settle in there. I'm gonna add a little fresh soil right against the back here. So this pasta zanum, just like the other crawlers, it enjoys its moisture and does not enjoy going dry. It does not wanna be dry for any period of time, really. Goodness gracious, the struggles of crawling philodendrons <laughs> this thing. There's not much else I can do with that. The stolen needs to have access to the soil, so it's got to be laying down flat like that. All right, let's get some moss out. Let that hydrate. So we got some really cute pink roots here. We're going to cover those just along the side, just to keep them where they can get some moisture and survive. I don't want those drying out. I think the philodendron mame is ready. So the cut in looks like it's fairly dry. Yep. And I'm just gonna unwrap the roots that or air layered and I've been air layering this, but I haven't been like real consistent about keeping it moist the whole time, but I think that they've done okay. Um, so I'm just gonna try to remove as much of the moss as possible. I'm just taking my time gently plucking away one strand of sphagnum moss at a time because <laughs> they, uh, the roots really stick to that moss. So it's kind of hard to get off, but I just take my time with it. 
That's about as good as I can do getting the moss off. So any other fragments, I'm just gonna leave on there and pot it up just like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is just prop up this end here because the roots start at the next node. So I'll just kind of get those down into the soil and let that <laughs> kind of sit up on the edge. And hopefully that'll start getting this in position to grow straight. That's, that's the goal anyway, trying to get it to straighten out. Now I could just cut this in half again but I've cut this plant so many times and I already have babies of it and I would just like it to start maturing. That would be nice, but we, we've got to work with what we got here. And if I need to uh, up pot it and you know propagate it and do something different with it in the future, I can definitely do that. But for now, I'll just start with this. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna be changing around the plant room and looking for a spot for these longer pots. So I'll work on that tomorrow with you though. Good morning, guys. It's five days later now, and I figured I'd show you where I have the plant set up. So I've got the Postazanum, the Mame, and one of my Gloriosums set up here on this little glass Ikea table. And this is directly under my Spider Farmer 2000 grow light. So I was actually growing the Mame, Postazanum, and the Plowmanii down here on this bench originally, and they were doing fine. They seemed to really enjoy that level of light. And then my Alocasia michalitziana or Alocasia freideck took over the bench and it has been growing nonstop. It loves this light. It fine, like I finally figured this plant out. I mean, it's been doing fine for a long time, but I, there were some things that I couldn't, I wasn't understanding about it. And most of it had to do with lighting. I was trying to put it in too bright of light and it was not approving of that. So it's not in low light. It definitely gets a good amount of light but it's a gentle light. So it's not getting heat from light at all. I also have my Alocasia Zebrina back here, which I made the mistake of trying to move across my room and it freaked out. It did not approve of being moved. And so I had to put it back under the light here too, because it loves the spider farmer grow lights. So actually both of those Alocasias love this grow light. So I will see how the crawling philodendrons do under it. But yeah, five days later, no one's freaking out and everyone's looking good still. Oh, I guess I should mention um, the Mame. I do have her baby up here too with her. So that is a little propagation that I did a while back. And then over on this side, I have my Plowmanii. And this is the mother plant that we just potted up. And then over here are all of her babies. And when this baby just put out a brand new leaf, which is looking gorgeous. I did have a very large Monstera Deliciosa against this wall, and it was basically taking up the entire wall. But I'm filming a video of plant room updates, and that's one of the updates, is I actually moved it into our bedroom. And so now that opened up this entire wall. Michael and I had gone to Ikea, we got a couple of Vistjo shelves. So this is that extra Ikea shelf that was going to go in our bedroom. That's what we bought it for, but since it didn't fit the space how we thought it would, it just became an extra shelf and I was like, oh, I will happily take that into the plant room with me. So I squirreled it away in here. The lighting, I'll show you how I set that up in that video that's gonna be coming up, but it's just a white gooseneck clamp-on LED grow light. And so I just attached that to the top. So I'm just gonna have to wait and see how they do. I'll just watch for new growth and also the, the size and color of any new leaves that are put out and just make sure that it that it seems to be happy. But yeah, it just gets mostly residual light being between my two grow lights, my two main grow lights here. And then also having that little, um, that little supplemental gooseneck LED grow light up above there. And also right behind me is my Southeast window. So it does get morning light coming through here and it really pours in and kind of lights up the floor in here, but they're out of reach of any direct sunlight. And then the other Gloriosum is right here with the darker leaves and the white veins. And it's putting out its new leaf. It is. It has grown since we repotted it. So even in that five day period. So it looks like it's adjusting really well. And my Spider Firmer 600 Grow Light is directly above here. So as you go down the shelves, it gets progressively uh, more gentle, more gentle light fall on them. And then next to that is the Philodendron Luxuriens, which actually came in in the Equiflora order. And I did the unboxing and repot and everything with you guys. So I already did that video, 
But I guess a quick update, that's the newest leaf it just put out. It's looking beautiful. It does have a little bit of damage because I think there was a period of time where I forgot to refill the water. Um, so it got low and I guess I didn't realize that um, this thing really likes its water. It really does not want to dry out. There we go. You can see it there. Yep, so that is from going dry and it was not appreciating that. But otherwise, it's beautiful and it's a very nice size. So I really, really have been enjoying that plant. There's one of the original leaves that it still has. Actually, it has both the original leaves it came with. The other one is over here. I'll show you another uh, mistake that I made. So this is the other original leaf that it came with, and you'll see that it has a peculiar bin to the petiole there, right? It's kind of like facing downwards. Um, yeah, that, when you see that happening, the leaf is trying to get away from the light. It, it's not pleased about the bright light <laughs> shining down on it. So I had it actually over here, if I turn this way without making you guys too dizzy here. I actually had it on that shelf over there. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not in focus. Hang on. There we go. So I had it on that shelf right there, but my window, my southeast window is right there. I thought it would be safe because it's like kind of like under there and it's not getting any direct sunlight or anything, but it was still too bright. So that excess light, it was only affecting this side of the pot here. So that's why it's only that one leaf and the other one is fine. But yeah, that's, that's what's going on there. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you guys that, but yeah, these velvety leaves. Oh my gosh, I love the philodendron luxuriance. Okay, I think that's all the updates for all my crawling philodendrons. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting or helpful in some way. Um, I will let you go, but first, oh, I want to show you this leaf here. Look at that baby anthurium leaf. Oh my gosh, when I saw that yesterday, I was like, oh, that is like one of the cutest little leaves. I love anthurium leaves. They're so adorable. And especially on an already adorable plant, this is the Doriaki that came in from Aeroid Market and it is putting out a brand new leaf. I'm so happy and <laughs> I love this plant so much. Um, so anyway, I will let you guys go for this video and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.